In this video, I'm gonna show you how I design speaker enclosures. And I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to make a cut list. And the adventure starts in WinISD. And this is WinISD, and the beauty of WinISD is that it lets you make adjustments to the airspace in your box, and you can see how those adjustments impact the frequency response of your box. So here I've made the box a lot larger, and you get this really nasty, weird response. And this box right here is exactly 1.5 cubic feet after you account for the displacement of the driver in the box and any bracing inside the box. That's our net volume. And you can see what happens if you make the box smaller or larger. If we make the box a little bit smaller, we see that we lose some low end extension and we begin to get a peaky box. So we can make the box really small and get a big bump in output around 50 or 60 hertz, which to some people would sound absolutely great, but that's not really what I want. I'm looking for something that's more high fidelity. I want a flat response all the way down as low as I can get and the 1.5 cubic foot seems to work for me. An important number right here is the F3 point. This is where we're down by three decibels and our F3 point is 25 hertz. So this thing is gonna play flat down to 30 hertz. It'll be down by three decibels at 25 hertz. Before you move on, it's also very smart to check the cone excursion. And we see here that we do have a cone excursion problem. We're above the red line, which is the X max for our driver which means we're going to need a subsonic filter to keep from over excursion, to keep from blowing the subwoofer. So we always check cone excursion. And for a ported box, you always want to check the air velocity from the port. This particular project I'm working on here is a passive radiator project. So while I'm checking that, I might want to check the excursion for the passive radiator. And we see that it also is going to move too much. So I'm definitely going to need a subsonic filter on this design. You can even go into WinISD and you can model a subsonic filter. If you would like for me to make a video showing these hidden features in WinISD, tell me about it down in the comments. Now there's no law saying you have to use WinISD. If you want to, you can just look up the manufacturer's recommended specifications and you can go with that and your box will turn out just fine. Now I'm gonna show you how I make my cut list. I do this so often that I put together a spreadsheet that allows me to just power right through it real quick. This particular spreadsheet works great for sealed enclosures. It works great for ported enclosures. It works great for passive radiator enclosures. It doesn't work for any kind of angled enclosures or any odd shaped enclosures. If you would like a copy of this spreadsheet, I'll give you some instructions on how to get yourself a copy down in the description. The beauty of building your own spreadsheet is that you can modify it so that you can do more with it. For example, I haven't yet added functionality for slot ported enclosures. That's gonna happen in a future version of this spreadsheet. And what we do is we start off by entering in the cubic feet. We're gonna enter in 1.75 cubic feet because I have estimated that that is what my gross box volume needs to be before I back out the driver displacement, bracing, that kind of thing. And the spreadsheet automatically converts cubic feet to cubic inches by multiplying by 1728. That's the magic number. Just multiply your cubic feet by 1728. That'll give you cubic inches. Then I'm going to enter in my material thickness. Now I'm using some interesting material for this project. I have found some one inch thick plywood that has been veneered with MDF. I know that sounds weird. The actual material thickness is 15 16 of an inch. So we just type that in. Now what we do is we enter two of our three interior dimensions and our calculator is gonna use the cubic inches we calculated up here in order to calculate the third one. The third one is our depth. So my interior dimensions, I'm gonna make it 12 inches high so it's big enough for a 12 inch driver to easily fit into it. I'm gonna make the width or the, the length of the box 42 inches and then we're going to automatically calculate the depth of the box. So this box is going to be six inches deep. So it's going to be a very shallow but wide box. And then the spreadsheet automatically calculates my exterior dimensions. So when I'm finished, the box is going to be 13 and 7 eighths by 43 and 7 eighths by 7 and 7 eighths. I have my cut list, which is once again automatically calculated. And here's the beauty of this. I can just highlight these cells right here and I can hit print. And then come here and choose print selection. And now I've got a nice cut sheet ready to go. I've just got to print it, take it down to the garage and I can start cutting out my wood. 
But before I do that, I need to visualize my design. You can do this on pencil and paper, but I like using SketchUp. Let's fire up SketchUp. Now in order to plan our cuts, we need to visualize our cuts as well. So I've taken a sheet of our material that we're using 97 inches by 49 inches, and I've gone ahead and drawn the dimensions for all the parts that we're gonna need onto this big sheet of plywood. The first cut we're gonna make is gonna rip the entire thing down to 43 and 7 eighths of an inch. So we're gonna to have to remove about five and an eighth of an inch worth of material, making sure in this case to take into account the kerf of the blade. And with that piece gone, we're gonna remove the two 13 and 7 eighths of an inch strips. These are gonna be the baffle and the back of our enclosure. Next, we set the saw to 12 inches and we cut a 12 inch strip. So we're gonna have a piece that's 12 inches wide and 43 and 7 eighths of an inch long. I'm gonna wait a second before I make that disappear and I'm gonna next cut the two six inch pieces out. So I'm gonna set the saw to six inches and rip those two six inch strips out just like this. And now with the saw still set to six inches, and this is important, you don't wanna be constantly adjusting the saw, you'll make more mistakes that way. So with the saw still set to six inches, I'm gonna take that 12 inch strip and I'm gonna start cutting out six inch slices for my sides and my braces. By taking a few minutes to lay this out on the computer or on paper, you're gonna be a lot more efficient with your cuts and you're gonna waste less material. Now I've got these two pieces right here left over that I can use on the next project. Now I've got a cut list, a simple schematic, and a plan for making my cuts. It's time to get out in the garage and build this box. If you wanna see that, hit the subscribe button right here. If you wanna learn more about this enclosure and this project, there's a playlist right here for you to watch. Or if you don't wanna do that, check out this video down here. I'm the DIY Audio Guy, and I'll see you on the next adventure.